Hello everyone and welcome back to Zaclit Educational Channel. So in this video, we are going to know important concepts related to the syllabus of CPCB Scientist B position. So these concepts are very important. Get ready with your notes to note down all these important points which we are going to discuss in this video. So without much delay, let's start today's video. So today we are going to know all the concepts which are important and related to the noise pollution. Yes, as I have given you the hint, so no need to read the question now. But as per this question is given in this slide, we have to read. And this question is, green muffler is related to what? So I have already said this, that we are going to discuss about noise pollution today. So noise pollution, this green muffler is related to. But we should know what is green muffler and how it is related to noise pollution because the questions can come from here. So green muffler scheme is a technique of reducing the noise pollution by planting 4 to 6 rows of plants around the populated areas or noisy places. So it can be around populated areas or noisy places like along roadside, industrial areas, societies near highways etc. So these dense tree what they do? They reduce the noise pollution as they filter out the noise and obstruct it from reaching to the citizens. So they act as a muffler. They protect us from the noise which cause several problems. So it is also a device for decreasing the amount of noise emitted by the exhaust of an internal combustion engine. So green muffler is also a device. It is not only a scheme. So it is also used in the engine to to decrease the amount of noise emitted by the exhaust of the combustion engine. So these two are different thing. One is the plants which are planted along the roadside where noisy places are there or it is also a device which is used in the exhaust of the internal combustion engine. Same purpose that is to reduce the amount of noise. So under this scheme that is green muffler scheme Ashoka and neem plants are planted. So you should note down Ashoka and neem plants are planted near the house or noisy places or resident areas to reduce the noise pollution. Now trees are also known as noise buffer because they are used to control the noise so they are also called as noise buffer. So they control the noise pollution even urban noises are muffled by trees just like stone walls. So if you make a stone walls it reduces the noise. Similarly, these trees, specifically Ahsoka and Neem plants, they reduce the noise. So here, what you should know here from these points is that an advantage of using plants as noise blocker is that they absorb sounds based in the high frequency that people find annoying. So in high frequency noise, they are able to absorb. And according to the USDA National Agroforestry Center, a properly designed buffer of trees can reduce trees and shrubs both. So here you should note down this point before that evergreen shrubs that too with broader leaves provide year round noise protection so they are the best to plant. So trees absorb sound waves with the branches and foliage. So with the help of branches and foliage they absorb the noise and evergreen shrubs are also very important with the broader leaves they provide year round noise protection. So here shrubs and the trees they can reduce noise by about how much about 10 decibel or 50 percent as perceived by the human ear. So before coming into the human ear they can reduce the noise by about 10 decibel or about 50 percent of the actual noise which is emitted. Now let's move on to the next slide and we'll know some more important concept and before that we'll know the question which comes in exam. So the question here is the faintest noise that is faintest detectable noise by a healthy human ear is of how much decibel. So our ear what is the lowest that is the hearing threshold which is heard by our healthy human ear it is 0 decibel you should note down and don't get confused between the pain threshold and faintest detectable noise. So this is actually what is the least amount that is decibel which an human ear can heard detect so that is 0 decibel which is the reference level that is the hearing threshold. So here you should know that 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz it is actually human hearing range. So we can hear the noise or the sound actually not the noise. So sound we can hear it from 20 to 20,000 hertz 
but in decibel if it is asked the minimum detectable noise is that is 0 decibel you should also know that beyond 20,000 hertz also some organisms are there they can listen that questions can also be asked ultrasound region which can be over 20,000 hertz it can be heard by bats and similarly infrasound which are lower frequency sound less than 20 hertz below 20 hertz it can be heard by elephants so these things you should note down infrasounds are lesser in frequency which can be heard by animals like elephant below 20 hertz and ultrasounds are more frequency sounds which can be heard by animals like bats now this table is also important you should note down this thing hearing threshold is how much we have discussed it is 0 decibel and what is human hearing range it is 20 to 20,000 hertz don't get confused leaves fluttering gives 20 decibel sound whisper in an ear gives 30 decibel sound normal conversation is 60 decibel cars and vehicles they produce 60 to 100 decibel airplane takeoff is close to the observer if it is listening to that airplane taking off it is 120 decibel and this thing is important pain threshold so the pain threshold is actually around 120 to 140 decibel that is we can say specifically 130 decibel it will cause pain in our ears so if the sound level is the pressure sound pressure level in decibel it is around 120 to 140 typically 130 then it will start giving pain to our ears next we will know some other important concept related to noise pollution and noise so this is here the question will read first then we'll go into this table first so this is the daytime noise standard prescribed for the residential area in india is what so it is specifically for india yes not for every other country so the correct option will be what it is asking daytime and residential area so daytime residential area limit is 55 decibel option 3 will be correct and here there are many concepts to know and note down very very important slides in this video so here first is that ambient air quality standards in respect of noise so keeping this in mind this noise pollution regulation and control rule which came in 2000 here is very important noise pollution regulation and control rule it came in 2000 under what under the provision of environmental protection act of 1986 so two years are coming 2000 is the noise pollution regulation and control rule it came under whom under the provision of environmental protection act of 1986 so as per these these rules provide ambient quality standards in respect of noise for different areas and zones of a city as per the time that is daytime and night time what should be the maximum level of the noise in other different areas the areas are industrial area commercial area residential area and silence zone so here as per this rule what should be the silence zone limit for the night time it should be 40 decibel and in the night daytime it will be 50 decibel so daytime it can be more and light time it will be less similarly for residential area night time it will be 45 decibel is the limit 55 is the limit for the daytime so these are very important and frequently asked kindly note down similarly same 55 decibel which is the category for the residential area daytime it is same for the night time but in commercial area 65 decibel is for the commercial area in the daytime and maximum industrial area night time is 70 decibel limit and 75 decibel in daytime so this table is important one more year it is not one actually it is two more year you should remember from this related that is the air prevention and control of pollution act it came in 1981 and it was amended in 1987 to include noise as an air pollutant yes noise is an air pollutant as per what as per the air pollution act that is the air pollution amendment act of 1987 air pollutant is noise is an air pollutant so here four years we came to know noise pollution rules and regulation control rules came in 2000 under the environmental protection act of 1986 air prevention act came in 1981 and it was amended in 1987 where noise was added as an air pollutant i hope it is clear let's move on to the next slide 
next slide why i am getting this slide again why this table i am getting here this is because to give you one more important thing so that is here you should mark here it is mentioned db decibel and in bracket it is a so why a is mentioned here we know decibel is the limit where we can measure the sound and noise so why a is given here so actually the decibel that is db scale is used to measure the sound level we all know however because the human ear does not respond equally to all frequencies we often use dba as a scale of measurement yes because human ear does not respond equally to all frequency so this is an adjusted measurement it is not the decibel only it is decibel a this is an adjustment me measurement of noise that takes into account what the sensitivity of the human ear to the various sound frequency which we can hear so this is a adjusted measurement it is not in decibel it is in decibel a so this thing is important concept next move on to the next question next question two statements are given from here we will get to know many many important things related to noise pollution so here statement one is noise pollution has an adverse impact on hearing ability as well as psychological well-being of a person is it correct yes it is absolutely correct why we will know here so first of all what we should know is that we will know statement one first and then we will go for statement two so according to the who that is world health organization continuous noise above 85 decibel for more than eight hours can be dangerous noise pollution of around 140 decibel for adults and 120 decibel for children can, can cause hearing damage so this is the hearing damage limit noise pollution can cause psychological dysfunctions a term describing an emotional reaction so here there is a direct link between noise and health according to the studies and what it can cause the problems in our body these questions are asked the related problems are stress related illness high blood pressure speech difficulties hearing loss sleep disruption loss productivity are the caused by the noise so these things are asked in the examination which are related to the noise pollution which are not related so these things are important to note now coming to the second statement second statement is human perception of noise level is linear so whether it is correct we will know so according to the statement 2 we will see this box loudness is a subjective reaction to sound amplitude it is a human's assessment of the strength of a sound it is not linearly related to either sound pressure level or sound power level so it is not linearly related so statement 2 is wrong that is human perception of noise level is not linear because it is a subjective re reaction to sound amplitude so i hope you have learned something here new now let's move on to the next slide next slide again coming one question is there so here the question is the impact of noise pollution actually it is not a question it is a concept already given here the impact of noise pollution on human health is governed by whom it is governed by intensity of the noise duration of the noise sensitivity of the human ear and frequency range of the noise all four things play major role in impacting the noise pollution on human health intensity duration sensitivity of the human ear and frequency range of noise next question is wildlife faces more problems than humans due to noise pollution because animals dependent on what noise sound actions behavior it is a chocolate question anybody can answer it is because animals are dependent on sounds according to this question it should be fitting correctly option b so these were some of the important concepts related to the air pollution noise pollution and years we knew here in this video and so this was very important i hope you have noted down so all the very best for the examination don't forget to subscribe the channel to all get further updates see you guys in our next video till then keep smiling and believe in yourself